Hello, Booktube. It occurred to me this morning that I completely forgot to do a Friday read. <laughs> it's still a new thing for me. Uh, so I thought I would do a slight catch-up one right now. Uh, uh, first talking about the three books that I read yesterday uh, due to the disastrous triumph of knuckle-dragging xenophobia that seems to be rising all over the world. <laughs> it was seen most clearly in Britain, but that you know, we're no strangers to here in America. I I felt like retreating, so I retreated into the Italian Renaissance yesterday. Uh, all three books that I read were rereads, but one of them was a remarkable thing. Uh, first one uh, was uh, this book, The Tigress of Forley by Elizabeth Lev. This is her biography of uh, Katerina Sforza, who, who was a... <sighs> Uh, even in the gallery of Renaissance figures, she was remarkable, <laughs> and it's a it's a wonderful biography. Uh, and then the next one was uh, Machiavelli's *The Prince*. I didn't really spend much time with the Robert Adams translation. I was mainly interested in the. This is a Norton Critical Edition, and in Norton Critical Editions, you get the text, but then you get critical essays, biographical essays, historical essays, and I was mainly interested in those. So I I, I glanced at the text, but I reread those. I I don't I don't like reading <laughs> uh, really good Italian in English translation. I just don't like doing it. <laughs> so so, so the, 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 that renders the remarkable reread and the most remarkable thing I read yesterday uh, doubly ironic. <laughs> it's, it's the new, <clears throat> new volume in the uh, Itati series of Renaissance Library editions. This is the uh, the Angela Nathaman and the Carmina Varia of uh, this guy, Giovanna Marassi, who was a 15th century humanist and doctor from Sicily, who uh, he said be that because of his Sicilian origins, because of his backwater origins, he was never more than just a sort of fringe hanger-on on the Este court uh, when he wanted to rise much higher than that. Uh, there's a good argument to be made that there were other reasons why he didn't rise so high, but it doesn't matter. Uh, this is a uh, in the in the Itate series, you get the original language on one side, whether it be Italian or Latin, and you get an English translation on the other. And <clears throat> uh, Marasio was very talented. He was a very talented writer. Uh, you know, well worth reading. He he. Uh, almost single-handedly revised a, a kind of Roman poetry. Uh, the, he almost single-handedly revised and updated the Roman elegy and uh, was imitated all throughout the Renaissance for it. And, and that would make this interesting enough to read it as it is, but the amazing thing about this book is that this is the first time that his writings have ever occurred in a book. <laughs> in any form. In any language, this is the first time that his work has been printed outside of manuscripts, <laughs> which just goes to show you a point that the Itati Library is forever underlining, whether they mean to or not. What em enormous amounts of work there are still to do <laughs> in terms of establishing, uh, you know, a canon for for the Italian Renaissance, for the, the literature that made the Italian Renaissance, that it isn't all just <laughs> the prints. <laughs> But anyway, that was yesterday. Uh, and then I wanted to show you the books that I'll be reading uh, for the rest of the weekend. Uh, starting with this one, uh, Love and Ruin. This is These are uh, long essays from the Atavist magazine. They're, it's it's uh, nonfiction, but long-form nonfiction. So you don't have many venues for that anymore. We do it at Open Letters Monthly, the, the online literary journal where I am the managing editor, but we don't do anywhere near the length of these pieces. These go on and on. Uh, and uh, I've read a couple of Atavist pieces and really liked them. So when I got this collection, I was very happy. I would sink myself into the whole thing and talk about really happy. <laughs> this will be gobbled down. This is the Tyrannosaur Chronicles. This is a uh, history of what we know about the Tyrannicids that, that ruled the earth and also what, what, you know, the great stories of their excavation and the 
great stories of the way that science has understood them. Uh, so <laughs> I am a, a rather large dinosaur geek, so I will, I will, I will love reading it. Uh, and then the next one is a reread. I found it for 50 cents, so I had to get it. It's Nicholas Montserrat's The Cruel Sea about uh, a corvette during World War II that guards shipping convoys, um, brings vital supplies to England, guards those supplies and also takes its share of hits from German U-boats, uh, and even in, in one amazing scene, saves some crew members of a German U-boat that it has that it has sunk. And this is a, a whole video on its own, a video about World War II fiction, but in, in lieu of that video, for now, uh, it says, I don't think I've ever mentioned this book on this channel before. I want to make sure to mention that this is one of the great World War II novels of them all, and uh, well, well worth your time. Uh, it had a million editions, so you should be able to find it for 50 cents <laughs> at a library sale. And if you do, and you think, uh, you know, it's granddad fiction, it's, you know, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't appeal to me at all, you're dead wrong. Montserrat knew exactly what he was doing when it came to storytelling. It's fantastic. Uh, and then the last one is something we have seen on this channel before, which will occupy me all of tomorrow, and I will be happy to have it do so. <laughs> Frederick Barbarossa. <laughs> this is John Freed's biography of, of the great prince and statesman and, and bloodthirsty warrior. Uh, and it's the first biography of him in English in I don't know how long, at least at least 60 years, uh, 50 years, 60 years, something like that. I haven't, I don't recall the last biography of Frederick Barbarossa that I read, so I will be gobbling this down. And then, as is my way... I will chase down a lot of the notes and sources and see what I can make of them myself. Uh, and there you have it. That is my belated Friday reads. <laughs> it was all Italian Renaissance yesterday, uh, a day during which on the world stage of history we learned that anyone who doesn't look exactly like you look in the mirror is evil and wants to hurt you. Uh, so I retreated from that <laughs> into, the, into the Italian Renaissance where... Yes, people cut off their enemies' heads, but at least they were civilized. <laughs> and then the rest of it is just as you saw. Dinosaurs, World War, World War II, and uh, famous German princes that are now forgotten. <laughs> Chunkers. <laughs> uh, so I'll, uh, I'll get right to it, and I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Bookie.